Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Richard Wagner's Goethe Demerum, live from the Bayreuther Festspiele with Marek Janowski on the podium, which I heard is a radio transmission on Bay Air Classic. Goethe Demerum is the final opera of Richard Wagner's Ring Tetralogy, and it's the one that wraps everything up and picks up where Siegfried left off. But before we get to the main couple of Siegfried and Brunhilde, we start the whole action with the Norns spinning the thread of fate and predicting what's going to happen between Valhalla and the Earth until the thread of fate finally snaps and they realize that it's all too late as Valhalla will come crashing down, causing the twilight of the gods. Hence, the title of the opera Goethe Demrung is Twilight of the Gods in German. So we then proceed to Siegfried and Brunhilde having their fling. And he says to Brunhilde that he is going to go on a journey where he stumbles upon the Hall of the Gibichungs headed by King Gunther, his sister, Queen Gutruna, and their half-brother, Hagen. Gutruna takes a fancy to Siegfried, and Gunther decides to make Siegfried his half-brother. And through that, the siblings decide to give Siegfried a potion, which will make him forget about Brunhilde. Hagen knows about Siegfried, as he knows who Siegfried's biological parents were, the Velsungs, Sigmund and Sieglinde. So, after he manages to take that potion and swear an oath of blood brotherhood to Gunther, we then proceed to Brunhilde, awaiting patiently for her lover until her Valkyrie sister appears. Valtrauta tells Brunhilde that Valhalla has been in total crap as of late. But Brunhilde states that she still wants to keep the ring. Valtrauta is totally against her decision and decides to say her final farewell to Brunhilde, stating that this is all going to go to hell. Meanwhile, Siegfried comes in as Gunther, with the help of the Tarnhelm, abducts Brunhilde to be brought to the Gibichungs. Albrecht and Hagen are basically in cahoots basically still craving for the ring. There is a double marriage between Gunther and Brunhilde and Siegfried and Gutruna. Brunhilde does not take kindly to this and vows an oath of revenge with Hagen and Gunther against Siegfried. And she tells Hagen that Siegfried's weakness is his back. The Rhine maidens warn Siegfried about his impending death. Hagen takes advantage of this and kills Siegfried on his back with his spear. Gunther and Gutruna automatically recognize Hagen's treachery and therefore Hagen kills off Gunther. Gutruna, who still thinks that she still deserves to be Siegfried's bride, just doesn't want to hear any of all of these accusations whatsoever until Brunhilde states that she is the one that she'll be true forever to Siegfried. She puts on the ring, tells all the men to light up a funeral pyre for both her and Siegfried, and with the aid of Grane, her horse, she rides into the flames and the Rhine maidens basically tackle Hagen take back the ring, and it's basically the end of the gods, but a new beginning for mankind. This opera, of course, contains a lot of famous numbers, most notably Siegfried's Rhine Journey and Brunhilde's immolation scene. Starke Scheite schichtet mir dort. However, aside from those numbers, I always look forward to Hagen's warrior cry, the hoi ho, hoi ho, ho ho, via, via. And it's just so epic in its execution. It's just wonderful, especially if you have the right basso who sings Hagen. With that said, let's get on to what I thought about the singer, starting off with Stefan Finke as Siegfried. I'm not really a fan of Stefan Finke's voice. 
It doesn't really sound too appealing to me. However, I still have to give him credit for being a really good musician with excellent high notes. I especially love his high C's. And he just seemed to really build himself up as the opera moved along. He started off a little bit static in the first act, but he got a little bit better later on in the opera. But his high notes were really consistent, really ringing and just very awesome in their own special way, even though I'm not really a fan of his voice. Even then, I still have to give him loads of credit for being a good musician. Then we have Catherine Foster as Brunhilde. I thought she was really, really fine here, and I thought this was definitely her best moment here in Götterdämmerung. She was absolutely really wonderful in the immolation scene, and even though she has to be compared to the likes of Astrid Varnay, Marta Mödel, Birgit Nilsson, Ludmila Vorakova, Deborah Pulaski, Isolde Eichle, Linda Watson, Violeta Urmana, and many, many other sopranos who have sung Brunhilde, I still have to give her loads of credit for her musicianship and that really fine timbre that she has in her voice. Once again, as Albrecht, we have Albert Dolmen, who, as I said before, was a former Wotan, but has now sung the role of this spiteful, howling, and spitting dwarf. And he did a very fine job. And what more can you expect from a very fine singing actor like Albert Dolmen. Then we go to Hagen, sung by the ever wonderful basso profondo Albert Pesendorfer. Now, just like his predecessors, Fafner, Fasolt, and Hunding, and his successors like Gurnemans, and his many other predecessors like Heinrich der Vogler, Hans Sachs, Veit Pogner, the Night Watchman. King Marke, Landgraf Hermann, Daland, and the Dutchman, Hagen is definitely one of the most coveted roles for any Wagnerian basso. And on top of that, this character really represents pure evil. Out of all the characters in this opera, Hagen is definitely one of the most selfish bastards in the entire tetralogy, basically wanting nothing more than the ring and power to have in his own hands, and he doesn't even care if he's fulfilling his own father's wish. What he wants is just the ring and all the treasures so that he can become more powerful. And with that type of characteristic, you really do need a big, booming, and very cavernous basso profondo to really bring out that menace and bite. Like, for example, you got Gottlob Frick, Kurt Böhmer, Ludwig Weber, John Tomlinson, Matti Salmenen, Fritz Hübner, and many other fine bassos who have sung Hagen. Heck, you even have the late, great Marti Talvela, who even specialized in this role, and critics have called Mr. Talvela's Hagen an elemental force. That is just how much of an interesting and awesome legacy this role has left to different bassos everywhere. And I thought that with Albert Peisendorfer as Hagen, he was definitely awesome in his own special way, as he's always been. He always had that fine, plush, and cavernous basso profondo voice, which he's very well known for, and he just has a very fine incision to this character, making him very menacing and making him just so full of malicious intent that I was totally on the edge of my seat. And there were just times that my hair stood on end. Then we go to his half-brother, Gunta, sung by Marcus Eiche. Now with Gunta, it's a very thankless part for any baritone or bass baritone. Some singers who have sung Gunta have also been very well known for singing roles like Wotan, The Herald, Telramund, and even Albrecht. Basically, it's one of those roles where it's very thankless, but if you have the right baritone voice, you could definitely bring out the best in this character. 
Heck, there were some Gunthers that were also very well known for singing Wotan, like Falk Struckmann and Hermann Ude. And I thought that with Markus Eiche as Gunther, he did a very wonderful job, really having that nice and fine technique to his voice, and he really knew how to be a fine vocal musician. Then we go to Gunther's sister, Gutruna, sung by the ever-wonderful British dramatic soprano, Alison Oakes. Now with Gutruna, you really do need a clear sounding spinto soprano voice and even a dramatic soprano voice who can be able to sing more lyrically than Brunhilde. She's basically a foil to her. With Brunhilde, you have her wisdom and her womanly nature. And with Gutruna, she has that tendency to be quite girlish in her own way. And I thought that with Alison Oakes, she managed to have a very gorgeous and very focused voice really having a wonderful timbre and having that shimmer and sparkle which just made her stand out in her own special way and i thought that with all of the female supporting roles she was definitely the one that stood out in her own special way. The other standout when it comes to the female supporting cast will have to be Marina Prudenskaya as Valtrauta. Now with Valtrauta, there has been no shortage of mezzo-sopranos and contraltos who have sung this very thankless yet very rewarding character. There has been lots of singers who have been singing roles like Erda, Fricka, Brangena, Mari, Herodias, Anina from Rosenkavalier, Lola from Cavalleria Rusticana, Margaret from Wozzeck, the first maid from Electra, the fortune teller and Adelaide from Arabella, who have basically made this role their own. And there has been no shortage of Valtrautas who have also specialized in roles like Erda and Fricka. And Marina Prudenskaya was definitely one of those singers. Aside from her, you also had the likes of Valtraud Meyer and even Marta Muru much later in her career. What more can I say about Madame Prudenskaya as Valtrauta? She did absolutely fabulously. I really love her trademark, smoky, dramatic mezzo voice, which proves to be very versatile throughout all the registers. And she was a very fine vocal actress really knowing how to navigate that voice very well with a very wonderful timbre and a very gorgeous tone. Then we go to the three Norns sung by Wiebke Lehmkuhl, Stephanie Hautziel, and Christiane Kohl, whose voices blended very gorgeously. What with Wiebke Lehmkuhl's cool sounding mezzo contralto voice with Stephanie Hautziel's high dramatic mezzo voice and Christiana Cole's more spinto soprano voice and the Rhine Maidens were gorgeously sung as to be expected with Alexander Steiner as Voglinda and once again Stephanie Hautziel and Wiebke Lehmkuhl as Velgunda and Flossilde respectively, really differentiating their voices from the Norns and making their voices sound lighter and lovelier. So overall, I really have to say that the singing was really, really great. But the absolute standouts for me were Albert Pesendorfer as Hagen, Alison Oakes as Gutruna, Marina Prudenskaya as Valtraute, Albert Domen as Alberich, and Catherine Foster as Brunhilde, and of course, the Norns sung by the Lehmkuhl, Stephanie Hautziel, and Christiane Kohl, and the Rhine Maiden sung by Alexander Steiner, Stephanie Hautziel, and Wiebke Lehmkuhl. And the conducting done by Marek Janowski was absolutely well polished all throughout. So overall, the singing was really, really fine, and there were some pretty good standouts. And the conducting, as to be expected from Maestro Janowski, was absolutely wonderful. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for my review of 
yet another production of Wagner's Goethe Dämmerung, but this time live from the Wiener Staatsoper. So until then, good night, everybody.